When we first started imaging the Milky Way, we assumed, based off of what we could see of the galactic arm, that our galaxy was as flat as a pancake. In recent years, this notion has been challenged. Most galaxies, like our own, have distinct features called warps, where material rises above the ecliptic plane. But how exactly do galaxies move? Does the material, stars, black holes, nebulas, dust, and everything else always follow the same path? Well, a new study challenges how the galactic precession actually works, as well as the precession of material in our own galaxy's warp. We're going to explain what a precession is and dive into the findings in this paper. But first, be sure to drop me a like, comment down below, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachi, author of Echoes of Olympus Mons, and this is Science Cat. To understand the galactic precession, first we need to understand how a precession works here on Earth. The precession of the equinoxes, which is the motion of the equinoxes along the Earth's ecliptic, is caused by the precession of Earth's axis of rotation. If you don't know anything about the precession, that sentence probably didn't clear anything up. So let's simplify it. In 129 BCE, Greek astronomer Hipparchus observed that the locations of the stars in his night sky had shifted from the positions in earlier Babylonian charts and measures. Hipparchus knew that this meant that it wasn't the stars that were moving, but rather the stage in which they were observed from. In other words, the Earth. When the location of important stars like Polaris, or rather Sirius, change locations over long periods of time, this is called a precession. A precession consists of a cyclic wobbling in the orientation of the Earth's axis. This usually takes around 25,772 years, way longer than human civilizations have thrived on Earth. And it was the third motion of the Earth discovered after more obvious ones like the day-night cycle and Earth's orbit. The gravitational influence of the Sun and the Moon acting on Earth's equatorial bulge is another cause for this gradual change, though the other planets in our solar system also have a small effect on this as well. And then there's the effect precession has on the projection of the Earth's axis of rotation that results in the north and south celestial poles. Because of this, these points trace out circles in our sky. Right now, the north celestial pole is pointing toward Polaris. But in 12,000 to 14,000 years, the north celestial pole will point 5 degrees from Vega. However, moving along with the Earth's axis is the celestial equator. The celestial equator intersects the ecliptic. And as the Earth orbits the Sun, the constantly changing direction traces out the ecliptic plane. In relation to this, though, the celestial equator is inclined 23.44 degrees toward the ecliptic. The celestial equator and the ecliptic both intersect at points called equinoxes. You know, that word we've been saying a whole lot this episode. The vernal, shown here, and the autumnal, shown here. Through the course of the Earth's orbit, the autumnal equinox can be seen crossing the equator twice, once in March moving from the southern hemisphere into the northern hemisphere, and again in September moving in the opposite direction, which is yet another reason why the Earth isn't flat. Huh, <laughs> flat Earth jab. Which brings us to how fast the equinoxes drift. The equinoxes drift westward along the ecliptic at a rate of 50.3 arc seconds. An arc second is an angular measurement equal to 1 36th of a degree, or 1 60th of an arc minute, which is around 18 millimeters and consequently the resolution of the human eye, annually as a celestial equator moves along the Earth's precession. As you can tell, there's a whole lot of wobbling going on in Earth's axis and precession. And as it turns out, the Milky Way might just have a wobble of its own. A study carried out by astrophysicists at IAC abbreviated from this series of words I can't pronounce and won't bother to for fear of butchering it. This person, a name I really can't pronounce, a doctoral student at IAC and the University of La Laguna, or ULL for short, as well as Martin Lopez Corridoria, authored the study published in the Astrophysical Journal, aiming to question the current model of the Milky Way's precession, as well as the warp in our galaxy's plane. And here's the thing. This study has basically shown that the current model of galactic precession and wobble is wrong. 
As we mentioned earlier, and probably in a bunch of other videos, the Milky Way is a spiral barred galaxy. It is composed of a disk of stars, gas, and dust, which is primarily contained inside the spiral arms. And while initially we thought this disk was flat, over the course of several decades we discovered that the outermost portion of the disk is a bit warped, twisting up, above, and below the primary plane of the galaxy, like this. Much like the precession of the equinoxes on Earth, the dust and gases in the Milky Way's warp is not static, but rather acts a bit like a spinning top and changes over time, as shown in this mind-bending animation. This precession of the warp, these researchers found, is a cycle that takes around 600 to 700 million years to complete, much faster than other theories predicted. To put this in perspective though, this is three times faster than the time it takes our solar system to travel once around Sagittarius A star the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy, which is a sentence I've found myself writing a lot lately. As explained earlier, precession is a phenomenon that occurs on Earth as well. Martin Lopez Corridoria and their partner took the variation of the amplitude of the warp with the motions of the stars into account while trying to plot its own precession. Their study concludes that using the velocities measured from the old stars in the warp, it's totally possible that the precession can disappear, or at least become slower than what we currently theorize it to be. In order to figure this out, Corridoria and their partner use the data from the Gaia mission courtesy of the European Space Agency, or ESA for short, and analyze the velocities of hundreds of millions of stars in the Milky Way's outer disk. This person, whose name I still can't pronounce, who is also a pre-doctoral researcher at IAC, had this to say about the study. In previous studies, it had not been noticed that the stars which are a few tens of millions of years old, such as the Cepheids, have a much larger warp than that of the stars visible with the Gaia mission, which are tens of millions of years old. Martin Lopez Corridoria concludes by saying, this does not necessarily mean that the warp does not process at all. It could do so, but much more slowly and we are probably unable to measure this motion until we obtain better data. More than 20 years ago, a paper published by Gark LaRouze, K. Kajikin, and J. Dubunsky aimed to show that the large and small Magellanic clouds caused this distortion. And while that's still certainly possible, these warps appear to be really common in other spiral galaxies. And it makes me wonder how our models will continue to evolve over the next 20 years. It seems like we've gone from a very static and unchanging view of the Milky Way over the last hundred years, probably influenced by how we don't see much change in the stars we can see at night, to seeing it as this evolving chaos of motion, almost like a living system. And I don't know, that's pretty cool. and should make us appreciate just how special it is that we even exist right now. Because in 200 million years, the Earth will be on the other side of the galaxy, probably won't have the same orbit, and we probably won't exist anymore. Change is constant, nothing is permanent, not even the universe. If you dug this content, drop me a like and comment what you think of this study. And be sure to smash that subscribe button, ring that bell to never miss an episode of the show, and check out the Patreon while you're at it. Couldn't hurt, right? Speaking of, look at all those names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.